Hello, this composition technique tutorial revisits the car chase scene from episode 5, HBO Westworld season 3, my entry for the Spitfire Audio Scoring Competition 2020. Composition elements are derived from a set of 12 tone triads, 4 triads and thirds that cover all 12 chromatic pitch classes. Application in this queue is illustrated with reduced score, audio and video fragments. The Spitfire Audio Scoring Competition challenges musicians to score a 4 minute car chase scene from the Westworld series. My entry used a set of 12 tone triads as source material. In this tutorial you'll learn what techniques were used by looking in more detail at fragments from the Rough Lady Rides Again score and video. Spoiler alert, this approach definitely will not lead to victory. How was this score created? To be honest I did not watch any Westworld episode before entering the competition and based my entry on this single scene. The process starts with creating a cue sheet from the scene breakdown. Here you see the Qubits scene marker list with sympathy timing and action description, using categories such as car chase, dialogue, gunfire, explosions and effects. From the cue sheet I generated a tempo track with important hit points falling on the beat, then started improvising and recording into the DAW and sketching on staff paper. After finishing the piano sketch I turned to orchestration with virtual instruments, followed by mixing in Cubase and creating a full orchestral score in Dorico. You may want to download and read the full score while watching this video. Let's look at the musical elements. I may have spent an hour or so on improvisation while watching the car chase scene, then decided to use an atonal idiom with 12 tone triads, that I thought would match the character of the scene. I used a single set from which different composition elements were derived. A 12 tone triad set consists of 4 triads that together contain all 12 chromatic scale pitch classes. There is only one option with 4 different triad types in thirds as shown here. The set includes the C major, E flat minor, D flat augmented and G sharp diminished triad. I discussed fundamentals and properties in a set of 3 tutorials on the YouTube channel. Given this 12 tone triad set we may create hexachords from pairwise combinations as shown in the diagram on the right. There are 6 possible hexachord combinations. Each hexachord has two stacking permutations where either triad is in the top layer and you will obtain differently sounding polychords. These hexachords have different degree of dissonance. All are high tension level as indicated by the Hindemith group 4 classification. Each hexachord corresponds to a 6 element pitch class set where the interval vector is another dissonance indicator. A further refinement is achieved with the Eulela chord tension level scheme, where voicing is the next determining factor. You may use close or open position triads, root or inverted position and cluster versus exposed voicing of dissonant intervals such as the major 7th or minor 9th. Within these high tension chords, 4 combinations yield pitch class set 631. These were used in the middle part of the extended car chase. And here are some example voicings. From the hexachords we may derive 6 unit pitch scales and melodic forms. Chaining such melodic forms yields what in the Schillinger system is called a melodic continuity and that is what you will hear during the longer middle section of the car chase. <music> 
Finally, it is not necessary to use all six pitches simultaneously. An appropriate subset selection may lead to more traditional tonal flavor structures or incomplete extended chords. Let's study this car chase cue in detail with reduced score fragments, audio and video excerpts. I produced both a Cubase MIDI mockup and a Dorico full score available on my website. The cue is dominated by a 3 4 time signature. In the instrumentation, I used a large woodwind section without oboes and low brass, no trumpets. I definitely wanted to avoid the large string section spiccato cliche and therefore decided on a small section of solo strings, about which more later. In addition, there are percussion and rhythm section instruments. The first fragment is the sustained hexachord for strings. The scene opens with a night shot and the imagery suggests mounting suspense and tension. I used the hexachord combination of the G sharp diminished over the D flat augmented triad. The reduced score shows octave transposition for easy reading and you'll hear a piano rendering first. In the instrumentation there is a bass clarinet motif with sustained high strings and synthesizer playing a non vibrato flautando cluster voicing. This setting will not mask dialogue and the music halts before the first gunshots. The second fragment shows the car interior with a dialogue. We use the first two triads from the set, C major and E flat minor, with a G diminished 7th chord in the bass, an opening contrary motion. The instruments are low clarinets and bassoons in a Bernard Herrmann style. Rhythmically there is diminution with shorter note durations suggesting the accelerating car starting the chase. Verified. Enable semi-automatic control. Disable safety features. Maximum speed. Go. Here you see the start of a recurring element, an eighth note arpeggio riff in bass instruments. It is derived from the C major over G sharp diminished polychord. This riff is repeated with the complement hexachord. The instrumentation uses a 1970s police series cliché. Piano left hand, bass guitar and pizzicato double bass. Drum kit hi-hat patterns support the groove. Note the synchronization of 8th note riffs versus sustained chords with image cuts and preventing masking the sound effects. <laughs> Now you learn the reason for my decision to use a small set of solo strings. The male protagonist has been intoxicated with a drug that leads to him observing parallel worlds and warped time. In support of the shots with the guy looking weird, I turned to the Bartok Second Violin Concerto, which has the technique shown here in the top staff. There is a violin double stop with an open D string and a finger in seventh position on the lowest G string. This is followed by legato playing of quarter tones around the pitch D. I transposed this up a fifth to pitch A4. I could have programmed this with a single audio modeling SWOM solo violin virtual instrument, but it was a lot easier to distribute this effect over three violins as shown on the lower staff, with first violin playing a steady constant pitch A, while the two others perform quarter tone pitch bends in random fluctuations.
Solar strings are doubled with a subtle synthesizer, then there are the high woodwind clusters. This is one of the few spots where I did not use a hexachord based voicing. This must have been the result of improvising at the piano, but I also might have applied a strict hexachord setting. Here is the full orchestration. And now combined with the imagery from the car chase scene. The music is louder than the final mix, where I prevented masking, dialogue and sound effects. We continue the car chase and interior shots with dialogue, this time using a modified 8 note arpeggio riff in lower parts. The basic form is based on the two triad combinations shown here, rewritten as a sequence of arpeggio tonal triads. Let's introduce syncopation to obtain a stronger rhythmical groove. This reduced score shows fragments and the full arpeggio riff. The hexachords are also used for sustained low woodwind cluster voicings that must not interfere with the dialogue. At the end ascending brass chords generate increasing tension. Here is the orchestrated version with the main instruments. Adding percussion, image and sound, listen to the result. Verify that the low woodwinds indeed are not masking the female protagonist voice. We need distance. Head south. The car chase contains a number of aerial shots. Darkness and distance inspired me to write a sort of blues theme for solo violin, based on two hexachords and a reference to Charles Ives' Central Park in the Dark. There is call and response interplay between violin, piano and clarinet. Listen to the piano rendering of the reduced score. In the orchestrated version note the addition of brass cluster voicing accents at the end of subphrases. The full mix reveals some Mickey mousing, that is, phrasing and percussion hits synchronized with the cuts in the imagery.
The chase continues with more interior shots and dialogue, preparing to open fire on the pursuers. Musically, a new element enters the stage, a set of parallel high woodwind hexachords, an atonal equivalent of six-part jazz sectional harmony. Listen to piccolos, flutes and clarinets. In the bass there is the pounding piano, with quarter notes and eight note arpeggio patterns. Sustained chords once again are subdued during dialogue. Did you hear the isolated notes near the end? In the orchestration, these are played as alto and bass flute falls, another 1970s police series cliché. In the final version note how the flute falls are complementing the actor grunting. Point and shoot. The scene continues with an extended chase, full of action and gunshots. I wanted to create a continuity by writing an extended melody in 3-4 time signature. Here is the process. I started with the four pairwise triad combinations that yield pitch class set 631. I wrote the six unit pitch scales and then created melodic forms with auxiliary notes and subphrases with a quasi-tonal character. Here is the reduced score, with the four subphrases that gradually move into higher register. These are connected through legato 8 note patterns. The articulate chords and steps are timed between sound effects. Here is the orchestrated version, with the lead instruments. In the background you'll hear 16th note synth arpeggios. These are a case of serendipity. I wanted to use the hexachord currently active in the foreground, but made a mistake and instead wrote the complement 6 pitch classes. But then I liked the contrasting effect and decided to keep it. In the final mix I hope to have achieved a climax effect towards the end. Verify the timing of woodwind patterns, brass, stabs and percussion hits.
Police ahead. Maintain speed. Sharp left. Now. When the grenade is fired from the vehicle, there is another feature for solo violin. The starting point is a set of ascending and descending hexachords. These were adapted into 16th note arpeggio patterns. Each beat of this virtuoso phrase opens with a double stop at the major 6th interval. On the violin these are easy to play, as the fingering diagram on the left shows. The shape of the violin melody mirrors the grenade trajectory, with a climbing phase that slows down at the apex while accelerating during the descent. It closes with down bow triple stops just before the grenade hits the target. This fragment required a lot of detailed MIDI editing involving bow direction, pressure and position, and other parameters of the SWOM solo violin plugin. In the background, the parallel woodwind harmonies return with two statements, while there is a brass crescendo and a number of stabs around the explosion sound effect. Listen to the piano rendering. And here are a few puzzling questions. The projectile starts as a grenade, launched from a gun, while homing as a missile. For trajectory control it must have either thrust vector control, steering rockets or aerodynamic control surfaces. The latter, a set of four rotating fins deploy in X configuration at the apex, as the footage shows. So I wonder, how was the climbing phase realized? Then, in the terminal homing descent, we look through the seeker head, a color video camera in the dark of night. This indicates remote control, with data transmission to the human operator in urban environment. Maybe JJ Abrams is willing to reveal the details of this miracle weapon. Listen to the main instruments performing this fragment. <laughs> Closely watch the grenade flight trajectory and target intercept in the total mix. Hold on. The explosion effect is filmed from various angles. This is supported by 4 plus 1 sustained hexachords for high woodwinds and strings. But we enter a new phase in the chase, as announced by the return of the opening contrary motion music from the start of the scene. Woodwinds are playing with flutter tongue, another parameter setting for the SWOM instrument plugins. Reduced dynamics in the middle prevent dialogue masking. Here is the final mix version. Drop in, intersect, maximum speed. 
The leading lady calls in a remotely operated motorcycle, which is accompanied with a march for solo violin and orchestra. Another hexachord combination provides the basis for melody, background harmony and typical quarter note seventh leaps in the bass. This was inspired by Ravel's Tzigan and Stravinsky's L'Histoire du Soldat. Let's start with my initial staff paper sketch. From here on, the music stays in 4-4 time signature. The violin plays 6th interval double stops with strong, successive tan bows. We hear a cynical, pounding march in the lower parts, with mocking legato arpeggios in woodwinds. And here's another detail. The motorcycle passes a pedestrian crossing with a flashing light bulb. The tempo and beats are synced to the flashing time interval. But not exactly, adding to the absurdity of this fragment. Here's the piano rendering of the final sketch. Which, after orchestration, becomes... Watch the flashing light bulb as the motorcycle accelerates. The shrieking violins at the end match another intoxication attack phase for the male lead actor, and also suggest the car stopping, as ordered by the lady in command. All right, I need you. Drop in, intersect, maximum speed. Nearing the end of the chase, the team exits the car and observes the developing scene in the quiet street. For this, I decided on silence, followed by a counterpoint setting with a lead violin and stepwise chromatic motion in lower parts. Here is the first sketch. And a later alternative sketch. And here is the final version, with a violin melody transposed up to the higher octave, sustained chords in woodwinds and brass cluster stabs announcing the collision. In the orchestration, note the descending leaps in bass flute and bassoon, followed by chromatically moving lower parts. The final mix creates rising tension to a next climax. Why the f are we stopping? Get down. By this time, I considered this car chase totally over the top and decided to use chaotic, merry go round style music while still adhering to 12-tone hexachord harmony. Lead violin and woodwinds play 16th note arpeggios. There is macabre pounding in lower parts. 
The male lead wakes from his intoxication dreams with a final quarter tone fluctuation around pitch A5 and the cue closes with a relaxing pure C major triad, the first chord in our 12 tone set. Listen to the arpeggios in the upper parts. The satirical accompaniment in the lower parts. And how the main instrumental parts match the imagery. which then becomes, in the final version... I'd like to leave you with a few conclusions. First a warning. Do not try this approach yourself. It will not win a competition. After uploading, quickly dislikes arrived. By now the appreciation balance has somewhat tipped, even with dislikes disappearing. Although it is an atypical musical idiom, I nevertheless consider the result appropriate for the scene and it is a meaningful application of modern harmony composition techniques. Here is an overview of the virtual instruments I used in the Cubase Midima Cup with audio modeling winds and solo strings, sample modeling brass as Vienna Ensemble Pro server instances, native instruments, rhythm section instruments and synthesizers, and Spitfire Audio symphonic percussion. The competition entry video is available on this YouTube channel. An audio only version on SoundCloud while you may download the PDF full score from my website. This is the last tutorial production in the crazy COVID pandemic ridden year 2020. Thank you for liking my videos, subscribing to the channel as you have been doing in significant numbers and for the feedback and challenging comments. Visit the website for more free content or purchasing ebooks. Stay safe, thanks for watching and see you next year.